hi welcome back to lemon drops art studio today i'm going to be making a muse face um one of you requested how do i make my smiles and so i decided i would just go ahead and make the whole little face um so i hope you enjoy uh right here i'm just using my little wood stick to just kind of put in a few of the facial key features like his little nose and his little cheeks uh yeah the uh, polymer um, clay softener right here just to smooth out some of that clay make it soft and pliable and push in his little eye ridges where his eyebrows will go um, I'm not squishing it so don't worry I'm just rolling the clay and giving it a little pucker so that it rounds out those features that I've just put in there because I'm never happy with something I will probably fiddle with this for a very long time. Uh, this is a acrylic tile, and I like to use that because it's clear, and I'll put in the front of the nose, and I can flatten the clay exactly where I want. That way I know where the best place to put his little nostrils. This piece was my third one today that I tried making. And after reviewing the video, I realized that there really wasn't much wrong with the previous ones, but I decided I didn't like them and smushed them midway. So I'm probably three hours in just to make this one little face. Hello, big smile, moving right along. So right here, I'm still working on his little nose and his eyebrows. Um, the bridge of the nose is really important for the muse. They just have that kind of upturned profile, make the little, like a little baby's nose. You know how it goes up just a little bit and it's kind of cute and just, just, you just want to pinch it. Um, building up his little cheeks. Uh, the biggest thing about the muses is, is their nose, their great big eyes, and their expressions. The mouths are usually a very important part of creating the character for me anyway other people might feel differently when they create their babies but this is how I do it just drawing 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 once I make the eye ridge, I will actually pull down some of that clay to build up those cheeks. And unlike the rest of the world, I just take a little razor blade and slice off some of that extra chin. He would prefer not to have that. Smooth, 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 pat, pat, pat. Make a little, oh yeah, I got some dirt in it. That's okay. I don't think I got it all. Might have to come back with some tweezers later. Round and out. Again, I'm not smushing. I'm just giving the face a little bit of a pucker and rounding out those harsher edges around the sides. It's coming together. There's just an area where I don't think I'm quite happy with how I got it going, so I'm going to fiddle with it. Indefinitely. Here we go with some nostrils. We'll flare those out a bit. This is one of my favorite parts. I just love the little noses. Create a little definition under the lip and the chin. His bottom lip should be further back on the profile than the top lip. Like it should never go just straight down or the bottom should not jump forward unless of course i'm making him with an underbite but um i like the jaws to be pushed back um, i think it makes a much cuter profile i'll use the uh, blade to break into the clay just to create a place for me to put my tools and then i'll use oh here's my my brush. I've abused my brush. Let me just clean that. Goosh, goosh, goosh. I'll use a little bit of the clay um, softener 
to just smooth out um, in the mouth. There we go. And I'll just continue opening the mouth and adjusting uh, the jaw and the lips until it's in a place that I like it. Rewatching this video, I realized that I could have left it several times, but I wasn't happy, so this is just, this little character gave me a really hard time today, so I think he's going to be full of personality when he's all done. It was a Sunday. What can you do? So anytime you're doing a mouth, you can just, you can leave it open, you can lift a, you know, it helps to look at anatomical pictures or emotions, um, pictures of emotion examples. Um, I like to look at giraffes, I like to look at horses, zebras, uh, miniature ponies, they all have very expressive faces and the little, little front lip and nostrils and nose, but that's kind of where I get a lot of my inspiration from. This tool that I'm using here is very helpful. It's got a flat um, front kind of up curve and the bottom is more of a bubble shape and that's just really nice for creating like the corners of the smiles or you know smoothing out the bottom. This tool here is my very favorite. Another artist named Tina gave me this. I got it in the mail a couple years ago and it has turned out to be my very favorite tool on the planet. Thank you, Tina. Fiddle, fiddle, fiddle. Adjust, adjust. Wipe, wipe. So you'll notice here, you're probably gonna freak out and say, what is she doing? But I don't want, the way the jaw is sitting now, I want it to come in more. I want that upper lip. You know, if you look at the profile of a dog, like a large dog, say a uh, German Shepherd, or not German Shepherd, I would say more of a Great Dane. Um, you see that, that kind of lip kind of come down and go back. And then the bottom jaw is much smaller. So right now I'm just kind of trying to bring that bottom jaw in more um, and kind of uh, create a better shape, one that I'm more happy with. It looks weird, but don't worry. I have my trusty, trusty sculpting tile. I can just give them a nice roll and the shape turns out to be good. I'll pat them with some cornstarch and use my makeup brush to smooth them out, kind of get rid of some fingerprints, and then store it on the front of my shirt until later. Smush in the top of that brow, give it a little definition. Go back in, replace the nostrils to where I like them. This is another one of the features that I feel are extremely important when creating a muse. Um, I don't just poke two holes, it's, you know, I have to listen to this piece and, and he has to tell me exactly how he wants his face. I feel like a, a polymer clay dentist at some point. There we go, the mouth is coming together. At this point, I'm pretty happy with his mouth and his little nose. I think I'm going to start working on his eyes, but first, I have to, hello, how are you? Okay, this little ball tool, I'm just going to stuff into the clay, spin, rotate, spin, rotate to try to create an even uh, divot so I can place my eyes. Um, do, 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 spin, rotate, spin, rotate. And we're gonna measure with this little stick, measure thing, stick thing. Measure against the eye, measure the other eyes. Yep, these are the eyes, which color? Let's see, um, purple maybe? See how that looks. I don't know. You guys like the purple? I like the purple. Let me think. Hmm. There's so many decisions. Let's just debate on that. 
Maybe if I wipe it with a paper towel, it'll just jump out at me. Nope, a little more wiping. Okay, let's think. Do, 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 do. And purple has it. Take those purples. My eyes have posts in them, um, which help me when I'm placing them. Sometimes, like before I was adding posts to the back of the cabochons, I uh, would just put the cabochon in and it would be crooked or it would lean or it would be cross-eyed. And once it's in the clay and stuck to that liquid Sculpey, it's very difficult to rotate um, the iris around to a place where I think he doesn't look cross-eyed or his just little eyeballs aren't, you know, looking wonky. So having the post in there allows me to push them through and just adjust them to where I like them. And get my little clipper nipper things. Okay, tweezers. Just kidding. Stick that in there. And stick the other one in here. Look, he's kind of bug eyed. It's a very surprised face. Lift them up and push them through. Right about now, I realize that the holes I made in the clay to get ready for the eye are just too deep. So here I am adjusting the iris and trying to get the eye to seat properly. Again, having these posts on the eyes makes things much, much easier. It looks like I'm really forcing it, but I'm not. I'm just turning. Nip the back of those off. They're pretty long. They're about um, almost half an inch, I'd say, on the backs. So I'm nipping off half of that. It still leaves me with enough to rotate or adjust if I need to, but um, I don't want the face laying, you know, wobbly on the tile while I'm working with it. So I cut those off. Right here, I am using my ball tool to try to adjust the eyebrows a little bit and give him the false eyelid um, to try to make up some of that space where I push the eye down, the hole is too far, the eye is not seating quite properly. Uh, so I'm going to add some clay here. And I don't know about you guys, but for me, symmetry is a very difficult uh, thing to get a handle on. Nothing I ever do is symmetrical. It's very difficult. Um, for being someone who's ambidextrous, you would think that I, I could at least do things somewhat symmetrical, but I can't. It's impossible. Therefore, I play with it a lot. And it, it took an act of Mother Nature for me to get this little tiny piece to stick to the actual clay and not everything else. And I'm just using the uh, rubber tool with the divot in it just to try to push the eyelid up and seat it, uh, make it look uh, more natural in the way that the, the face is made. And looking at the video, it doesn't look bad, but I know from doing it in person that it just, it just wasn't coming along. There was gaps between the face and the eye, and it was just, like I said, those holes were way too deep. So after lots of trying and poking and prodding, some more uh, softener, smooth that out, make it look natural. Add a little bit of clay here, a little bit of clay in the corner, try and build up the gaps. realizing that it's just not gonna work. 
Here I am being a little frustrated and just pulling the eyes out. No worries, it's art, right? We're having fun? We're having fun. Make a couple adjustments and I'm going to add a ball of clay into each one of these eye sockets and just start over. It's not a big deal if you get to this spot and you make a mistake. Um, clay is such a wonderful medium. It's so forgiving sometimes. <laughs> um, so I just take my, my ball tool and smooth out the edges, kind of push that into the shape I want. And I'll add a little bit of the liquid um, clay softener just to kind of uh, blend in those seams, you know, so you know you can't tell. Add the other side. Check and adjust here and there. Not a big deal. Bloop, bloop, bloop. So I'll just add a little bit of the clay softener to smooth that. I'll clean off some of my tools. I'm getting a little goopy here. Boop, 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 boop. Organize some stuff. Breathe for a minute. Not say goodbye balls. There we go. So once I'm pretty satisfied, I'm gonna smooth it with my little fingers. Smooth, smooth, and take a minute. Just a breather to not think about eyeballs, and maybe make an adjustment on his little mouth, poke him in the nose. So enjoy this couple of minutes without me talking while I make some slight adjustments. Now I'm going to go back in here, kind of fix the eyebrows where I've added all that clay, make sure that the sides of the cheek and the bridge of the nose are where I want it. Anytime you add clay like this, you know, you have to go in and re-detail several areas because it's just kind of thrown things off, so. This is, my OCD is kicking in just a little bit, but that's okay. Make for a very cute little muse. Amusements. Pulling down some of that extra clay I added. Because again, we want the eyes to sit nice. We don't want them to be popped out. This little flat spatula looking tool is perfect. I just slide down and blend in that extra clay that I pulled down and that'll just give him cute little poochy cheeks a little more softener you know this looks like a facial I would really enjoy for any of you out there who like to have facials or face massages I'm a little envious of this of this little head right now there we go, he's coming together. Smooth those cheeks up. Contemplate life for a few minutes. Okay. Do 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 do. It does take me a while to get happy, but once I'm ready with a much, much lighter touch, 
I'm going to re-enter those eye divots. I'm being very careful not to go quite as heavy handed as I was earlier. I don't want to have to do all of that work again. Like I said, this is the third face today. I'm almost over it. But crisis averted. We're, we're managing. The, the eye on the left side's a little low towards the top, so I'm noticing that. I'm going to have to add clay to kind of bring that side up, but this is a very easy fix. It's nothing to freak out or be stressed about. Just roll a little clay, make sure it's soft, stick it on top, use your ball tool, and just kind of push that in there. Um, see? Easy peasy. Not a big deal. Smooth it out with some liquid clay. Do you want the profile? I want the profile, at least. On the Muse babies, just, there's a look to them. If you look towards the top of the tile, or if you've ever followed the Muse, or you've been a fan for a long time, you know that they, it's that face that gets ya. That just gets ya. Got my handy dandy measuring stick thing. Measure, measure. Adjust. Make some adjusts. Measure. Oh. Lost my measure. Don't check. Don't check. Alright. I'm pretty sure at this point I am just kind of fiddling <laughs> because I know I've messed up a few times. Yeah, that's my slight little breakdown. Okay, moving on. Clean the eyes off. They just gooped. I don't have to really add more of the um, like of stuff to the back of the eye. It's still pretty, pretty goopy from when I ripped them out earlier. Just clean it off of the front. I try not to get it on the front before I bake it because then I have to scratch it off, and sometimes it scratches the eye. So clean, clean, clean. Little bug eyes. That one's leaning. Pull it out, pop back in. Again, the posts just make it nice. Don't worry. This is the pucker roll. Puck and roll, puck and roll. Fix his little whip. So he has that cute, perfect little kissable little face. If you've ever seen a horse eat grain out of your hand and they move that, that front lip around, that's kind of what I'm going for here. A very cute, like a little prehensile lip. And with my dental tool, I'll just add a little definition under that jowl that I made earlier. Kind of get these eyebrows and the expression I want. And soften off these edges. Don't you wish it was that easy to adjust your face? Let me just roll it on the wall for a minute. I'm a little puffy on the left. Roll, roll. There we go. Feeling much better about him now. Quick look into the camera. Hi, world. Here I'm noticing a couple of things that need fixed, which doesn't take too much hard work. Just Clean the eyes and adjust the side of the nose. Give them a nice powdering. That's just cornstarch. Smooth anything out that has fingerprints or um, get kind of the goop off. Again, I'm going to store some of this cornstarch on my shirt for later. And it's right about here that I took my fingernail and gouged the top of his nose and was very upset. Right in here. It's okay, I made the repairs off camera just to spare you guys the monotony. I think he's looking good. His little personality is coming through. 
and I'm happy. Ta-da! I hope you guys enjoyed watching me struggle through my third muse face of this very happy Sunday. I um, look forward to seeing what this little baby turns out like, and I will keep you guys posted for future projects or uh, little baby makes. Stay tuned. I'll see you later.